Welcome to the Focolari Word of Life podcast for April 2024. My name is Nick Chamferani. In today's episode, we will be listening to experiences that relate to this month's Word of Life, which says, With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4, verse 33. Welcome, Tom, and thanks for joining us again today. It's a pleasure to be here, Nick. Your monthly introductions help us to focus more clearly on the significance of the Word of Life. Can you share this with us now? Sure. We are called and we are sent. This is an important theme that the monthly Word of Life teaches us. Each phrase that we get calls us to a way of life that gives us a direction in the way we live. This month encourages us not to keep our spiritual lives to ourselves, but rather to give testimony by showing that Jesus lives through us in the way we love our neighbor. It's through that love that God's grace is generously given to each one of us. Thanks, Tom. Welcome, Javier. It's great having you on our podcast today. Uh, thank you, Nick. Thank you for inviting me. Especially thank you for inviting some Vincent de Paul in your podcast. Javier, when I read your story in the church bulletin the other day, I thought of how well it relates to this month's Word of Life. And, you know, what better way to give witness to the resurrection of Christ than by helping our neighbors? And your story really does that. But before you share, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Sure, uh, Nick. Uh, I am the president of the chapter of St. Vincent de Paul at IHM. I have been here in Atlanta for 10 years. I believe my greatest joy here is to work at St. Vincent de Paul and help our neighbors as much as we can. I detect a slight accent. Can you tell us where you are from originally? Um, I was born in Mexico, and I have been living in the U.S. for the last 40 plus years. I was a, a professor at a university, and I am retired now. Thank you for that. So tell us, how were you able to help this woman and her family as she was about to be evicted from her home? So one of the things that we do at St. Vincent de Paul is eviction prevention. So this woman contacted us. She had four children. And this is similar to many of the cases we have. This is a solid family with work and, and good habits, but things just go wrong. Uh, in her case, her mother was dying in Florida. She had to go there. She lost her job and other complications. And sometimes that's when they call us. They ask for our help. We do home visits. We go and visit people in their family. We pray with them. And we try to understand their situation. It's different when you help a specific person. Yeah. You go to a family. You meet the kids. You become more human. You understand the anguish and the suffering of people. Sometimes often for difficulties that they have very uh, little control. I really admire the fact that you actually go to the homes and you pray with them and you you get to know the family. And, and I think that's, that's a, a wonderful witness. Sometimes we go there and just listening to their stories, listening to their problems, having somebody who pays attention. Sometimes we cannot help, but we can make referrals to other organizations. Well, Javier, I... I am very grateful that you could take the time to join us today. And I really pray that the work of St. Vincent de Paul, which is such an important work, may flourish and continue and be blessed. And uh, again, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, we, we have been in Georgia for 120 years. We have 73 chapters in Georgia. We are one of them. We are very active. And it's not just us, it's our parishioners who help us 
and, and give us the, the energy to go every week and try to help people. Thank you, Nick, for having me. Thank you, Javier. Welcome, Maggie. It's great to have you on our podcast. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I had the great pleasure of working with you this past weekend where 90 teens attended a special retreat. You could feel a wonderful presence of God there. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do before you share your story? Definitely. Um, I'm from Kansas City, and I recently graduated from Kansas State University. Go Cats! Um, and after college, I just felt the call to really serve the Lord in a very tangible way and to live out, um, yeah, just being a missionary by my baptism. And so I felt really drawn to the organization Life Team and their mission to lead teens closer to Christ. So um, back in September, I moved to Camp Cove Crest up in the beautiful North Georgia mountains um, in Tiger, and I've been living at camp for the past few months, and we've been hosting retreats as well as going through formation for us missionaries to learn um, yeah, just what it's like to, to really be the Lord's, to sit at His feet, um, and in that space, learning how to love Him and to love others. Thanks for that, Maggie. Can you share an episode or a moment in which the risen Lord was present in your community? Yeah, I mean, there are so many times um, living within this community that I've learned to see the face of the Lord in others. I'm learning to see the ways that He shows His yeah, unique truth, beauty, and goodness, um, specifically in the women that I live with in a place that we call Joy House. Um, that's the name of our home. And I think it speaks to the fact that we are living from this place of joy. Um, specifically, I learned from my house leader, Jessica, the importance of joy and how it is not necessarily choosing to have certain emotions in a circumstance, but rather um, it's a stillness within our hearts of learning to live from a place of truth. Mm. Yeah, just like really rooted and convicted of the fact that the Lord loves us, mm -hmm. that He has risen, that He has the final victory, and that, yeah, His last word is always love. And so living in that space physically has helped, I think, my heart spiritually and just learning to live in that space of really entering into the resurrection and living as a people of Easter. Thank you so much, Maggie, for sharing your beautiful story with us. Praise God for the gift to just be a vessel for Him. Thank you. You're very welcome. Before we dive into our next story, I have a quick but important message for all of you listeners. Each month, we are so delighted to bring you real-life stories of faith in action, but we can't do it alone. This free podcast is supported by our donors. If you have been moved by what you've heard, if you found a glimmer of hope or a spark of joy in our episodes, we urge you to join us in this divine adventure. Consider donating to Focolari Media by visiting our website, focolarimedia.com forward slash donate, and specify that your donation is for the Word of Life podcast. Together, let's continue to inspire thousands of people all over the world so that the Word can be part of our lives. A heartfelt thanks for your support. Welcome, Julie. We're delighted to have you with us today. It's good to be here, Nick. Thanks for inviting me. Before you share your story, could you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm with my husband, own an economy of communion business. Actually, I've just recently retired from it, but I still have experiences from it, and I still have uh, learned so much and put those experiences into practice in the things that I'm doing now. Thanks, Julie. I'm sure you have many opportunities to help so many people in need. And it's true. There are opportunities. Mm -hmm. So this is an experience of my life in the Focolari, but specifically in the economy of communion as, as a business owner. After years of renting an office, my husband and I bought a building and hired a custodial firm to clean it several times a week. They assigned a young woman named Heather to vacuum the carpets, perform general cleaning of the office and conference rooms and kitchen, and to empty the waste baskets. Over the next two years, 
Heather was our dedicated housekeeper. We were very happy with her work and the rapport that she had with our employees. She and I shared family stories, the ups and downs of being a working mom. Heather and her family lived with her dad in a rented apartment to share expenses, but she was saving to move out on her own someday. Her life included many struggles, family relationships, drug use, but she didn't complain, and I came to admire her positive attitude and sense of humor about life's hard knocks. She was hardworking and cheerful at work, even when she became pregnant with her third child. She worked into her eighth month to maximize her leave time with her new baby. We told her cleaning company that employed Heather that we would gladly accept a temporary substitute, but that we wanted Heather back after her maternity leave, and they agreed to this. I sent Heather a card when the baby was born and awaited her return. After a few months, I called her about a small gift that we had for her and learned that her company had terminated her because of her pregnancy. Apparently, they were not planning to tell us unless we asked. Heather was now seeking small jobs and hoping to make a go of it on her own. So I politely ended our relationship with her previous company and asked Heather to join us and take us on as her first new client for her startup cleaning company. One day after several months, she came to work especially happy. She had found a small house that she knew she could afford and had already offered full price for it, certain that the owners would accept it. However, there was one problem. The mortgage company began to backpedal because of her credit history. It wasn't bad. It was non-existent. She had never borrowed anything before. She had always paid cash, saving up for things that she needed. And this was why the bank had turned her down. And she was crushed. When I shared this with my husband, John, we mulled over whether to help. We couldn't hire her on as a full-time employee, so she was not eligible for traditional employee benefits. But we felt that she too was our employee and also our neighbor. We recalled an Economy of Communion Friends experience with providing microloans and felt that we could do this too to help Heather with a significant down payment. Unlike the mortgage company, we knew her well and felt that she was a good risk. In fact, the risk was not so huge compared to the benefits we would have paid if she was full-time staff. So we followed our hearts. We set aside the money and developed a fair repayment plan and offered her a no-interest loan. When we told her of the plan, she was floored and delighted, and she cried. We both cried. But then there was one more step. The mortgage company required our company's bank statement, proving that we were the source of this money as well as a letter declaring that it was a gift to her with no expectation of repayment. This way, if she ever got behind in her payments to the bank, she would have the responsibility to pay the bank before she paid us. We wrote the letter to the bank with trust that this was a good investment in her and in her three children, no matter what the outcome. It's what we would have done for our own children. It's what we would want a neighbor to do for us. As a result, Heather received the mortgage loan and moved her family into their new home. She came to work one day beaming with pride and photos to show everyone her new house. Over the next few years, we saw that this one small step of ours in supporting Heather had made a big difference in her life and in her family's stability. Unfortunately, that's not the end of the story. One day, with no explanation, Heather did not come to work as expected. We were concerned and tried to contact her many times, but we were unable to make a connection. We eventually heard through a friend that her ongoing personal and family problems had caused her to give up her cleaning company. Although we have not been in contact for many years now, we still think about her and pray for her and her family, knowing that our investment did a great deal of good for someone who has had more than her share of difficulties and obstacles. Our experience with living out the business lifestyle of the economy of communion for these decades has given us a certain outlook with blessings coming to us as business owners in many forms if we can manage to recognize them. The relationships we develop with each employee and everyone we come to know are true treasures that remain in our hearts. We thank you, Heather, for the gift you gave to us in knowing you. Thank you so much, Julie. Your experience is one that shows great love without expecting anything in return. You're so welcome. And indeed, God does find a way. 
And we hope that it continues to bless Heather in whatever way God wants. So thank you for joining us today. I hope you have been inspired by the wonderful stories shared. And I look forward to being with you again next month. To listen to a reflection and commentary on the Word of Life, just go to the previous episode of this podcast. I invite you to join me each month for new episodes. You can also read additional experiences in Living City Magazine. Please consider making a donation to Focolare Media so that we can continue producing inspiring podcasts. Visit give.focolare.us. Thank you in advance for your support. Bye for now, and God bless. The Word of Life is translated into approximately 90 different languages and dialects, reaching millions worldwide through print, radio, TV, and other media. There are special versions for children and teens as well, which you can find at livingcitymagazine.com. This podcast has been brought to you by Focolare Media.